Hi everyone. We're very excited to be here today on Moonlight TV. We're the Fan Brothers. My name is Cherry Fan. I'm Devin. And I'm Eric. And we're going to be doing a reading today of The Barnabas Project, a brand new book. Um, we're so excited to do this one. This is Barnabas, our little character here, and we're going to find out uh, all about his adventures and the adventures of his friends. So thank you so much for joining us today on Moon Lane TV. The Barnabas Project by the Fan Brothers. If you open the book, you can see all of the secret files of Barnabas' friends. The Barnabas Project by Terry, Eric, and Devin Fan, published by Tundra Books. And here is Barnabas' very own secret file. Barnabas lived in a secret lab. He was half mouse and half elephant. And he lived in the lab as long as he could remember. The lab was hidden beneath perfect pets on a perfectly ordinary street. It was deep underground where no one would ever find it. The lab was where they made perfect pets. Except Barnabas wasn't quite perfect. He had been put in a part of the lab called Failed Projects. His home was rather small, but that just meant it was easier to keep tidy. The green rubber suits always fed Barnabas his favorite food, which was cheese and peanuts. And yet, he sometimes wondered about the world outside of his little bell jar. It was Pip the cockroach who told him stories about the world above. Stories about a sparkling silver lake, green trees, and mountains that reached all the way to the sky, lit with their own stars. Maybe someday I'll sit on the grass and look at the stars, said Barnabas. And when he closed his eyes, he almost could. Impossible, said Pip. Nothing's impossible, said Barnabas. But secretly, he worried his friend might be right. At that moment, the green rubber suits came in. They turned on the lights and checked each bell jar one by one. They made strange noises to each other. They peered and they poked. They peeked and they prodded. They put red stamps on all the jars. Then they left. What does it mean? said Barnabas, looking up at the strange red stamp. It means you're going to be recycled, said Pip. That's what happens to all failed projects. You'll be fluffier afterwards, offered Pip kindly. And you'll be cuter. And your eyes will probably be bigger. I like having small eyes, said Barnabas, although he wasn't even sure anymore. Barnabas slumped in his jar. He wasn't fluffy enough, and his eyes were beady. But he liked himself, just the way he was. And what if, after he was recycled, peanuts and cheese were no longer his favorite foods? What if his friends didn't recognize him after? What if he no longer cared 
about green trees and mountains lit with their own stars. We need to escape, said Barnabas suddenly. The other failed projects gasped, but then they cheered. Impossible, said Pip. Nothing is impossible, said Barnabas. He took a step back and he kicked as hard as he could. He charged at the glass, but the bell jar was much stronger than he was. Finally, Barnabas made a sad sound with his trunk. A tiny crack appeared. If a tiny sound made a tiny crack, what would a giant sound make? <coughs> he was free. Then he freed the others. The dust bunnies, Light Up Lois, Bumble Bear, the Amatax, Mushroom Sloth, Wally the Ripple, Stick One and Stick Two, Quirt, Moshi, Pompidou, Fertile, Blinky, the Bottle Mogs, Lowell, Percival, Spike, Pinto, Chloe, Peep, Leaf, all of them. You have to understand that they'd never been outside of their jars before. There was quite a commotion. They whooped and sang. They chirped and hooted. They stretched their legs and jumped for joy. When they calmed down a bit, they peeked over the edge. The floor was far below. Now what, said Quirt. We have to work together said Barnabas. One by one, they helped each other down. Until they finally reached the floor. Shh, said Barnabas, and they all fell silent. Then they heard it too. Footsteps in the corridor outside. Quick, said Barnabas, we can go through here. He didn't like dark places, but the footsteps were getting closer. Everyone crawled into the vent with Light Up Lois leading the way. It was a tight squeeze for some of them. The vent led into the most secret part of the secret lab. They all looked up. We need to run, cried Pip. But Barnabas couldn't run. The great sad eye seemed to be looking directly at him. We can't leave it behind, said Barnabas. It's scary, said Pip. It's monstrous, said Quirt. It's appalling, said the Amatax. It's a failed project, said Barnabas, just like us. They worked together to turn the great valve that opened the tank, but it was too late. The green rubber suits had found them. Just when all seemed lost, the tank doors swung open and water flooded into the lab. Up the water carried them. up to the world above.
when they finally opened their eyes, they were in a puddle surrounded by shelves of perfect pets. Everyone ran towards the exit. Barnabas stopped. It was almost like looking in a mirror, except Barnaby's eyes were bigger and his fur was like cotton candy. He was perfect. Barnabas, Pip called from the front of the store. Look, it's the outside world. Barnabas ran to join his friends. He might not be perfect, but he was free. The world was much bigger than Barnabas and his friends ever could have imagined. And just like Pip said, there were mountains that reached to the sky lit with their own stars. You were right, said Pip. Nothing is impossible. Soon, they found a place full of sunshine and happy noises, green trees and soft grass, a place that might be home. It wasn't always easy. But they always stuck together. The end. And if you look at the very end of the book, in addition to the failed projects at the beginning, you can also see all of the perfect pets in their packages and find out more about them. Thank you so much for joining us today for our reading of The Barnabas Project. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to have your very own copy, you can go into the nearest uh, Moon Lane bookstore to pick one up. Thanks, everyone.